Good day, it's Rob here again. Uh, in one of my last videos, I discussed um, or showed my, how I made up a, a collet, an ER collet um, mount for my old Shawblon 102 lathe, and I also mentioned that I use ER collets uh, on my little Chinese lathe here, my cheap Chinese lathe, and uh, you know, thinking about it after, I thought, well, you know, when you look at uh, all the little lathes that are now being bought by people, I mean, you know, lathes are now so cheap, and they're good, I mean, you know, these little Chinese lathes, I know some people bag them, but I reckon they're fantastic, they're accurate, you know, they're as big as you want to make them to be, um, not everybody wants a monster, and if you're just doing stuff like, you know, radio controlled aircraft or making, you know, small engines, you know, little model engines. These things are just brilliant. You know, you could, you could have a, a little 7 by 14 or a, up to this size and do model work really nicely. So, you know, you look at all these little lathes uh, people are buying and then you look at lathes that are sold uh, at some stage and almost universally there's never any collets sold with them. You know, I think people... A lot of people just never venture into the world of uh, of collets. You know, they never go down that path because I know when I started out, you know, and I'm not a machinist. I'm just a backyard hacker like everybody else. But uh, when I started out, you know, you, you read the, the literature and you saw the uh, the mention of collets, and it was always sort of you know high end machinist type um, thoughts went through your head on that. You know, it seemed like well, you know. You're into making microscopes and um, gun, you know, ammunition casings for like rifles. You, you should be going down that path. So, I'm sure a lot of people never ever sort of really look look into collets, and they're just happy to use their three jaw chuck, and it's good enough to do most things, and uh, that they're doing, and they get by, and the, the, well, they're really missing out because. Uh, well, collet's got a lot to offer and they're not expensive and I'll give you a run through. Just This is just a very basic beginner's guide to sort of what, what you can get out of collets and why you really should have a good look, close look at them and maybe you can get yourself a set. What can a collet do that a, that a, uh, a lathe chuck can't do, uh, the drill chuck can't do? Um, why is a collet system worth even uh, having when you've got all these other sorts of chucks that you can use? Well, there's several reasons, and uh, uh, one of the uh, main reasons is accuracy. A uh, collet system is, is extremely accurate. Um, I use an ER collet, so I'm just, I'm just going to talk about ERs because that's what I'm familiar with, but collets all basically have the same characteristics. Some are just a bit easier to use than others, and some are cheaper to buy, and some fit uh, smaller machines better. So we're talking about ER series collets here, which fit most um, cheap lathes uh, up to about 10 inch. We'll have a, uh, a Morse taper uh, system, which is cheap to buy, and you can get uh, ER systems in Morse off the internet. Good quality, no problem. Okay, so what's the collet got to offer? The, the, uh, a normal chunk hasn't uh, got to offer. Normal chucks are okay, they can be quite accurate. I mean, a four jaw can be as accurate as a collet if you set up correctly. Um, so yeah, great. Uh, it's a scroll chuck, I haven't got one here because it's still on the lathe, but I mean, basically a drill chuck is like a scroll chuck. In, in, in essence, it works in a similar fashion, similar principle, um, just drives it a bit differently. Um, these are all good, they can be quite accurate. I mean, this is a high quality Jacobs ball bearing chuck, um, came with the Shawblin. This should be good, but you don't know. Now, the one downside with all these, these uh, jaw type chucks is that um, they can crush in to the, uh, the item that you've got in them and they can mark it, they can damage it. Uh, the big advantage uh, of a collet in comparison is that it grips all the way around whatever you put in it. So you've got uh, full uh, tensioning all the way around it. You're not applying uh, force through just three or four almost knife edge points, I mean, in a way, 
and you know that you know if you're working soft material and you screw up your, your chuck, uh, yeah, the, the chances are that you'll you'll, you'll mark it. And unless you uh, uh, pad the jaws on your chuck with a bit of aluminium or copper strip, um, yeah, you know you're going to be frustrated. You're going to have to rework that that surface. So collets won't damage stuff. So if you're putting in say a thread, if you want to say grip a thread, if you were to put that in your three jaw chuck and uh, and grip it, you'd almost certainly find afterwards that you've you've damaged the edge of the thread because it'll be pinching in on in three locations. Whereas you can put it in a collet and it's going to pull up and grip all the way around. Also you'll find that in comparison uh, it's got a good length of grip. So you know, you're not going to damage the thread, uh, you're not going to crush light stuff. I mean, if you were to put that in a forward jaw chuck and, and t t tighten it up, it would, it would just distort that. So anything, anything like that. So they're very, very good. They're very um, non-intrusive on the work that you're, that you're, uh, that you're uh, you know, working on. Um, what else? Well... Okay, here's an example of what a collet can do. Now, here's, an old, here's a big old one-inch, um, well-worn, uh, reduced shank drill. Now, if I was to put that in a normal three-jaw chuck, um, it, uh, it wouldn't grip very well at all. But I can put that in a, in a collet system, and being, not that particular one, but being round, it will, it will grip all the way around on the grippable surface. So it would be reasonably accurate. I mean... It would certainly be a, a better situation than trying to put it in a three jaw. So there's another example. Also, okay, you've got a nice, nice set of drills, and uh, hopefully they're, they're nice and you know unmarked on the end. So what happens? You put them in a three jaw chuck, um, and uh, or a four jaw, or even. I mean, if, you, <laughs> if you're going to do those sort of things, but normally on, on a lathe, you'd be putting drills into the tail stock in a three jaw chuck. You tighten it up, and once again, on a drill, the hard section is here, but the, the shank is usually a softer material, so it will grip. What happens if it jams, or it comes under serious load, and it starts to uh, spin in the chuck, in the chuck jaws, it's going to tear up the shank if you drill, and you finish up with a whole lot of drills, which should be in good condition, but aren't, because the jaws of the chuck have crucified them. Okay, once again, if you were to put that drill shank in a, in a collet, of the right size, of course, it will grip it all the way around, and uh, it's very, very unlikely that it will damage um, the um, the drill shank, even if it was to spin in the collet, which is extremely unlikely. Why is it extremely unlikely to spin in the collet? Well, it's gripping all the way around for a start, and instead of doing up um, your chuck with a puny little key like this. On a collet, you're doing up, doing up with a big mother like this, so you can put a hell of a lot more tension on a on a collet than you can possibly do with a drill chuck, and it won't hurt it. It won't hurt it, and it won't throw out the axis or anything. So, collets, in my opinion, got a lot going for them. Okay, so there's the basic overview of collets. Now, you know, okay, people, you know, a lot of beginners don't want to take the chuck off, and you know, well, you know, I've got to take the chuck off, and uh, and then you know, it's a lot of mucking around, and uh, I think they're hesitant to actually go down the collet path for a number of reasons. But you can actually um, go down the collet path and try it out. I mean, the collets aren't that expensive these days. You can get a good set of the R32s, uh, you know, the mount, the Morse taper, and collets for a similar price to a, to a, a good quality chuck. So, and the, uh, your AI system's almost certainly going to be good quality. I haven't seen too many dodgy ones around. They all seem to be pretty well made. So, how can you go down the, uh, the collet path without sort of, you know, going in over your head and have to make an up draw bars and all the rest of this stuff? Um, just basically buy it and go. Well, I'll show you how I'd recommend you sort of uh, tackle it. Right, well, we're back to our cheap little Chinese lathe again. And, uh, um, you know, when people think of collets, they think, oh, yeah, collets in the headstock, you know, milling and... Uh, doing fine work gripping it, and that's great. That's a great way to, to use collets. But you don't have to be using them on the headstock. They work equally as well in the tailstock. And, I mean, whereas people will invariably uh, grip their drill bits um, 
with a, uh, a standard drill chuck. Um, you know, I mean, you're always going to be centre drilling and you're always going to be drilling to, uh, as a precursor to boring and uh, they'll invariably reach for their, uh, their little drill chuck. But you don't have to use a drill chuck. You can use a collet. And that, that, that's what this is for. This is my, my ER32 collet, which goes in the tailstock. And I use it exactly the same way as a drill chuck. But the advantage is it's more accurate. Uh, it grips a lot harder. The drills won't spin in it, even the really big ones. I mean, it, the taper on the Morse will let go generally before the, uh, before the drill will spin. So you're not going to damage your, uh, your drills. Um, you can do it a lot tighter. You're not going to be frustrated with drill spinning, um, which can easily happen. And it's not much harder to use, doesn't take much longer to use than, uh, than a standard drill if, you, you know, if you're organised. So, um, yeah, that's what I do, and that's a good way to actually get into using collets. Use it in the tailstock first, see what you think of them, and uh, move on from there. So, how easy is it to use a... Uh a collet chuck in the tail stock. It's a piece of cake. It doesn't take much longer than using a regular drill chuck. In this case I'm going to use a reduced shank drill, a big one, for uh, as a precursor to uh, uh, using a boring bar. So I'm going to drill it out as big as possible to use the heaviest boring bar possible. And then you just put on your uh, your wrench and your shifter and you lock it up. And these mothers will give you a lot more tension than you're ever going to get with a puny chuck key. So, we're good to go now. We've got our big drill in there. Uh, it's not going to slip in the uh, in the collar. If anything slips, it will slip in the taper, the same as a, uh, uh, a regular uh, drill chuck. Same situation. And you know you're not going to damage your drill and it's going to be as accurate as you can possibly make it for the drilling job that you've got provided and provided your tower stock is aligned correctly and the drill's not bent, it'll drill that nominal size hole and you'll do a good job. Okay, so once you've played around with the tower stock, uh, if you do like what you're uh, using, um, well you can move on to the headstock and you can uh, get another... Uh, um, chuck to uh, take the same set of collets and use them in the um, in the uh, headstock spin all you need is the bigger is the bigger morse taper and you just have to knock up a drawbar and uh, be prepared to take the chuck off so that's it folks it's uh, it's a great system very accurate not hard to use not expensive and uh, um, it does things that you can't do with a normal chuck so that's it a very brief overview if you like what I've done and you want me to do a video on the uh, on the headstock side of things, just setting up the uh, the boring bar and stuff like that, yeah, put it in the comments and I'll see, see if I can find some time and uh, maybe do one. Okay, stay cool. See you all.